EcoCycle Zero Waste video series. Last week, we talked about recycling myths, and this week our topic is the problem with plastics. Plastics pose a lot of challenges for the planet, for people, and for recycling, and there are many reasons why. Let's get into it. The first problem we'll talk about is plastics upstream impacts, meaning its environmental and social impacts before the product even gets to the store shelves. Plastics are made from oil and gas, so the extraction process is hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, which can cause air and water pollution, methane emissions, and exposure to toxins. Once you consider these impacts, you start to really rethink the value of creating something like a plastic straw that's used for maybe 10 minutes. Now let's look downstream at the impacts of plastics, or what happens after we use a plastic product. 91% of the plastics we use end up in landfills, incinerators, or in the environment, like in our oceans, collecting into continent-sized masses. By 2050, if our plastics trend continues, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Plastic never fully decomposes. It just breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces called microplastics. Microplastics are now so prevalent in our environment that they're found in our soils, water, fish, food, and virtually all of our bodies. There's no escaping it. Microplastics were even found in the rainwater collected at a site 10,000 feet above sea level in Rocky Mountain National Park. Every piece of plastic ever created still exists in our environment somewhere. Plastics create significant recycling challenges. First, as a material, it's just not inherently good at being recycled. Materials like aluminum and glass can be recycled infinitely back into the same item without losing quality. Not so with plastic. At best, a plastic bottle like this one can usually be recycled only a few times. That's because unlike glass and metals, plastic does lose its quality as it gets recycled. So it's more likely it will be downcycled, meaning that it has to be turned into a product like carpeting, which will then be landfilled after its useful life is over. Rather than being part of a circular system going round the recycling bend over and over, plastic cycle is ultimately linear. One of the biggest problems with plastic is how much is being produced. Disposable plastic products and packaging is being produced at a feverish pace, but only some plastics have recycling markets. If no market is buying a type of plastic, it can't be recycled. Since the 1950s, plastic production worldwide has exploded from about 2 million tons annually to a whopping 440 million tons in 2015. Plastics production is expected to double in the next 20 years and nearly quadruple by 2050. The reality is that recycling will never be able to keep pace with the increase of plastic production. With all that production, there is little participation by plastic producers to create recycling markets for their products. Manufacturers just churn out their plastic stuff, but they don't buy it back for remanufacturing. Typically, recycling markets are created by the industry that makes them. For example, producers of aluminum products buy back recycled aluminum to make new aluminum products because that makes lots more sense than going into the rainforest, strip mining for bauxite, and sending it to Iceland to turn into aluminum. It's less costly to just make aluminum out of recycled aluminum. However, for the plastics industry, it's cheaper for them to keep drilling and making plastics from virgin oil and gas, since fossil fuels are not only so cheap, but subsidized. To fix this problem, the plastics industry should take responsibility and buy back their own material, like glass and aluminum producers do, instead of putting the burden on the recyclers and on you, the consumer, to figure out what to do with plastics after they're used. Finally, knowing which types of plastics are recyclable can be so confusing. The recycling symbol is found on most plastic products, but it turns out that doesn't mean that the item is actually recyclable. Like we've talked about before, the recycling symbol is largely unregulated. The number inside the recycling arrows indicate the kind of resin used to make that plastic. So you can't go by the symbol to know whether it goes in the recycling bin. As always, which plastics are recyclable depends on your local recycling guidelines. But generally, there are some plastics that have stronger recycling markets and are healthier for you and the planet. The plastics you want to avoid are the ones with numbers 3, 6, and 7 on them. These are plastics whose production processes are toxic. They have health hazards associated with them when we consume food and drink out of them, and they're significantly harder to find a recycling market for. So, those are the problems with plastics. But there are solutions. 
We always want to reduce and reuse before recycling, but especially when it comes to plastics. But to truly solve the plastics crisis, we need the plastics industry to one, simplify the types of plastics they use. More standardized packaging makes it easier to recycle it. Two, stop using numbers three, six, and seven plastics resins and switch to making packaging out of the less toxic, more recyclable and marketable resins. That would be your numbers one, two, and five plastics. Three, take financial and physical responsibility for their products recycling. Many countries and states either have or are pursuing legislation to hold plastics producers responsible, as well as legislation that reduces single-use plastics. As consumers, we should avoid disposable plastics as much as we can. But the real problem with plastics is systemic. It didn't happen because you forgot to ask for no straw. We need to work to change the bigger system. Vote with your dollar and be active in local plastics legislation. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week.